guys welcome back to my youtube channel i really need to figure out how to greet you people so i don't want to be one of those youtubers that have uh like a, a phrase or a greeting that they have or say in every intro video um but i think i'd like to have something to say because it's always awkward for me to greet like the first few seconds of my videos i'm always cringing because it's just like what do i say <laughs> But hi, welcome back. Thank you so much for coming back. I want to send a big shout out to a lot of the new people that found my channel. I think something happened. Something in the algorithms of YouTube suggested my video to a whole lot of new people. So to my new little subscribers. Hi guys. Thank you for joining this little family of ours. We're going to grow soon and soon and soon. But I'm so appreciative of everyone who takes the time to just click on subscribe. Even the few ones who said they're part of the notification gang. Sia bonga yala. So thank you so, so much. I really, really appreciate it. Keep sharing the videos. Um, if they impact you, if they make you laugh, people said I'm funny. <laughs> so if you think any of that about me, please share the videos so we can get this family even bigger. But I want to thank you so, so much, guys. Let's get into this story time, shall we? So, I don't know what provoked me to tell you guys about this. But I felt, hey, let's do it, okay? This is my first, very first story time. So, I hope you enjoy it. Um, I hope you enjoy it. So, I'm going to tell you about the time I gave birth in a public hospital. Okay? <laughs> There's a movie, guys. You, hey, okay. So let me tell you why, first of all, that happened. So this is my first pregnancy um, planned. All my pregnancies have been planned. Um, I did wait a little longer for my husband to get on board because he didn't want a kid. Men are just naturally more like financial about it. And then we're all emotional, I'm ready. Ooh, I want to be a mom, I'm broody and all that stuff. So, I already wanted a kid honeymoon, okay? Um, but thank God, he made us wait. Um, he being my husband. And I actually do think, like in hindsight, I would have waited maybe another two to three years before I had my first babe. I think we'll get into it in another video, but there's just a lot that changes. A whole lot that changes. Number one, with just you as the person carrying the child. Physically, mentally, it takes a huge toll on you. Um, and there's just so much you have to adjust. A new look, a new body. Um, things of, the ways of doing things completely change. And then it comes into the relationship aspect. Things between you and your partner change. The priority is the child. Let's not lie. I know people always say, oh no, the child comes and they fit into your lives. Like, your life mustn't stop because there's a baby. But for the first at least a year and a half to two years your life is centered around that baby like you can't just up and go to a pizza date when you've got a, a nine week old child unless you're like kim kardashian with 400 nannies you know what i mean so life changes in your relationship and then just finances change um the way things are run in the house change decisions that you make change so um we can't run away from the fact that a kid brings a lot of change and I really do think or wish if I could do things differently, I, I would have waited longer to have my first child. But when I had him, I was so happy. It felt like the perfect time, which it was. Duh, God ordains these things. So it was the perfect time. Now, a little backstory. We, so we got married and then it was two and a half-ish years before we fell pregnant. It was just us. And we had medical aid. My husband is a financial advisor. Of course we're going to have medical aid. And we had a medical aid with Discovery. Because that's what he works for. Or with. And so. <laughs> girl. We are not sick people. So I'm definitely. I'm, I'm a healthy hand. Like. If I get a cold. I would hardly go to the pharmacy. My husband on the other hand. Is more of the medicine guy. But that's where it stopped. We don't get hospitalized it's just not a thing for us so we kept paying medical aid and I think at the time I was working like a like a, those student jobs which were good enough for the both of us I mean we didn't have expenses so 
he worked now in the financial space, financial advising space, and he was starting out. And everyone who knows, knows that financial advisors earn commission. Most financial advisors. I'm, I'm sure there's ones who have a salary, but um, it's not a lot. But yeah, he was a strictly commission-based earner. And um, you know those things are, are rocky. There's good months, there's bad months. But we basically never had a need for the medical aid. But we had the medical aid. It's the wise thing to do. So we had medical aid for like a year or a year and a half. Something like that. But what I know is we had medical aid for majority of the time we were together before having the child. And so we came to a point where we felt like, okay, we, you know, we, we really don't, we don't use this a lot. And I know it's not a very smart thing when you say it and talk about it because things can happen in moments where you don't expect it. But we were really like, ha, we're young, come on. You know, this money that we're paying every month through medical aid, we can use for a date or a trip or whatever. So in our naiveness, <laughs> we cancelled the medical aid. And really, things were fine. Like, for a couple of months, things were fine. We were like, oh, see, we didn't need that. Then we were at a conference, my husband's work conference. And um, there was a night where he told me, He's ready, we're good, we can have children. I say, what? So I was very excited about that, we got to working. So I use an app, um, it's called Flow, I'm sure most ladies know about the Flow app. And I track my cycle and the days where I ovulate, obviously higher chances of falling pregnant and we get busy. <laughs> so um, all of that just fell into place. We Everything, everything, I know the day my child was conceived. <laughs> okay, so, um, for pregnant, oh, joyous occasion. Everybody happy. The families, because it's first grandchild on either side. I'm lying. It's not first grandchild on paternal side, um, but obviously it's Homoto's first child. And then, um, on my side it's first grandchild, and then it's like church people are happy. Everybody was so happy like this child was so expected and like prepared for and just everyone was anticipating meeting him so I don't even know or remember how it came about or how we just remembered or decided or not decided but discovered that oh I don't know medical aid <laughs> so how did it even happen Basically, when my husband went back, yes. So now we realize, oh crap, we don't have medical aid. Um, we need to get that back quickly. So my husband goes, does the things. Then he comes back to me one day and is like, yeah. So they're not going to cover the birth. But the minute the baby is born, it's covered. So in my head, I'm like, mm, okay, not a train smash. How much does it cost to give birth? <laughs> um... Yeah, no. So when the figures came back, I said, look, there's no other way, babe. We're going public. We're going public with this thing. <laughs> so let me just break it down a bit, like just the reality check of prices for hospitalization, giving birth, anesthesiologists and the OBGYNs, everything. So I remember, so he, he's got clients that are doctors and he um, went to one and asked one, it's not the one that I wanted or was worth, but it's just one of his clients. We went in Bloemfontein, so I guess the price range is somewhat the same. So he went to one of his clients that um, was a gynae and he said if a patient pays cash, I think at the time he charges or charged I think it was 48k or 50k if I remember correctly that's just the labor of the person to take the babe out of your stomach <laughs> okay I'm not talking hospital fees like you sleeping there the rent you must pay for that three to seven days that you're sleeping there um oh gosh what else expenses are there uh, 
look the biggest ones are the doctors and the hospital like you sleeping there the room you understand and cool so my husband is very optimistic he is the guy that's impossible like when something looks impossible my husband is more impossible to the impossible situation he's like no I can do that and you just look at him like so he's like no let's give it three months I can make that money so what we calculated our overall costs to be I think it was gonna be 80k roughly 80k that we would need to cough up to successfully pay for a private hospital birth out of our own pockets my angel <laughs> I don't think I had ever said 80k with my mouth at that point but I was like let me not be uh, what's that word let me not be that wife that doesn't have faith and all that blah, blah, blah. let me shut up carry this babe what I born but I'm supporting you so I think a few months went by or something like that and we just realized look there's not enough time we need to start putting a plan in place um, we just need to get things going and be sure also just to put me at ease to not hyperventilate when the time is closed and worry about stuff like that where I should be at peace carrying the babe so um, money was made but not enough. I think it was only enough to either cover hospital or just the doctor. So we just realized like one thing we're not going to do is now go in debt for the sake of a private birth. And I really, every chance I got, I put him at ease like my angel, my husband, my lover, I'm okay. I'm really fine. I will not die. Mm. I know the things that happened. Oh no, I thought I knew the things that happened in public hospitals. But um, I just knew and felt like I'll be okay, bro. It's not like they give trash doctors to the public hospitals. Um, they give experienced doctors to the hospitals as well. I guess it's just the care after the birth and whatever procedure you have at a public hospital that's cause for concern. He really didn't want that. And I guess it's also like an ego thing, like I'm going to put my wife in a possibly dangerous situation. I don't think any man, even the ones that really don't even have jobs, like that. But it's just circumstantial that, look, I've got a public facility that I can use, but I don't want to. I wouldn't prefer. I just think any man would want to give their wife and their child the best. So after after so many conversations, um, eventually he accepted um, that I'd you know, be fine and that I can do this. And I genuinely was fine. I. I was so fine. The last thing I wanted was debt or putting him under stress. Like it's also a time for him to be excited at ease that his first child is coming into the world. The last thing I wanted was him now every day huffing and puffing to make money for me to go to a private hospital. You know? There's just more important things in life. So let's get into the journey. Eh? <laughs> Labor Day comes, nothing's happening. My mom, she came over. And that night, um, she said, no, let's go to the hospital just for them to check you because nothing had happened the whole day. And now we know this. Most women don't give birth on their due date that was predicted by the doctor. So it's not even a thing. I'm not stressed. But we're going just in case. We get there. Hey, Batu. Suddenly, I've got high blood pressure. Girl, I didn't have none of that. For the whole pregnancy, I was a healthy hun. And so... Suddenly, excuse me, when the doctors see, oh, my bl blood pressure is high, I get a little bit nervous. Like, oh, what is this now? Like, why am I, why are there surprises? They tell me, no, it's nothing to be concerned about, but now you are unfortunately, uh, is it a risk? High risk case. Bored. So they're going to transfer me to another public hospital. I was going to one in town, not that it matters where it is, but it was, it's called Universitas hospital that's where I was going no I'm like national hospital because that's where I went so I think these hospitals where they cater for women who are low risk they're gonna give birth naturally Kore it's just a breeze then there's other hospitals that cater for high risk only I think so now I'm going to Bilonomi Bilos <laughs> those who are from Bloom would know where that is I know the area it's based in 
I've kind of sort of heard the things that happened there. And I immediately think, okay, now I need to really stop being relaxed. I kind of need to have my guard up a bit. I need to pray. Not that I wasn't praying before, but I need to kind of strengthen myself because it's this is a different ball game. Sharp. Get there. First of all, it's full. Girl, there are pregnant women in the aisles. They look like they're in labor. I must say it wasn't that deep, but they just look under distress and you can tell it's not it's not going great for this lady right now so you can assume okay she's in labor or she's close but anyway i don't let any of my surroundings you know i can't remember how long we waited or stood for me to be put on a bed but sharp i was put on a bed eventually changed into my um not so cute hospital gown i'm on a bed Everything's chill. I'm still not in labor. I'm fine, girl. So I'm in a ward and there's three other people with me. Girl. Girl, I, I can't even remember the time. It's really all a blur in terms of finer details. You just remember the bombastics. <laughs> hey, the ghetto. Okay. Giving birth in general is the ghetto. So, let me tell you about the first bombastic. It is off, it's, the sun was out, so I would, I would assume it's like daytime. I'm chilling, the baby still isn't there, like, Kumkani is chilling hard, bro. I think this is the following day, so it's the 4th of July. Eh? The 3rd of July. I, I just know it's like the day after my initial due date. Chilling, bro, nicely. I think I'm on WhatsApp or Instagram. Unje. A girl gets wheelchaired in. She's a young colored girl. She doesn't look like she's feeling great, but it's not that deep. She gets put on the bed next to me. A few hours later, this girl starts making like sounds, like moanings and groanings. <laughs> it's just uncomfortable sounds and you can hear, okay, oh, she's in pain. The nurses come to her. I don't know what was happening and then they leave again. I don't know how many moments later, this girl starts eyeing, bruh, like, yeah, she was audible, and more frequently. So I think she's in labor. Now remember, all I know is movies. I actually don't know what a woman in real life looks or sounds like when she's in labor. So I thought, because it's more intense, that baby's coming. Then I hear the lady, this girl, say, Sister Egvel A. Ne? Let me translate that. In township Afrikaans lingo, that means I need to number two. I need to poo. <laughs> so uh, the hospital is in, it's close to a colored community. So most patients, they are colored. So, U sister, in classic nurse behavior, is not happy at what the girl just said comes to her shouts at her like don't you dare do that you know you're not supposed to do that don't push poor girl's like okay i think the sister goes so the curtain was definitely um closed so i couldn't see her i only saw her when they were uh, bringing her into the room that was the last time i saw her but this whole time i could hear her so after saying she wants to poo Nurse shouts at her, walks away. Again, I don't know how many moments later, this girl is is doing it. She said, screw that. Okay? Oh. Hectic. She said, screw that. I'm pooping. <laughs> Sister, I want to tell you the truth. I don't know what happened between the girl screaming and the nurses rushing to her next thing you know it's such a blur next thing you know the girl is being cleaned the girl has been cleaned all i remember seeing i think there was like a like the nurses didn't see but some of the curtain was open a bit so much blood i've never seen in my life so much blood underneath that girl like on her bed on that thing that they put not a sheet but that thing so much blood 
and they were cleaning they were cleaning they were cleaning and um and I just remember that girl crying she was crying so much she was crying so much and I don't know if they told her she lost her baby or whatever but that baby was breech and the girl was not supposed to push um and the baby came out and didn't make it so she lost her child so that was my first bombastic guys it, it I'm not gonna lie it made me feel some type of way like I was relaxed and then I was immediately like You know, I try to really block that out because I'm like, uh-uh, uh-uh, I, I need to focus. <sighs> now it's night time. Yes, it's night time. Let me tell you the little bombastics that keep happening during the... Every woman knows this is the worst, one of the worst parts of waiting to be in labor. Is when they have to check how far you dilated you are. It's the most invasive thing, NJ. So the doctor or whoever's checking you has to put their fingers in. I don't know which fingers it is. Is it these two, these three, what the hell? But they have to put their fingers in to feel your cervix. Um, so I had a few who were doing it re like you seamlessly. You don't even feel anything. Yeah, but there was this one. I really hate that man till this day. So I was sleeping, and first of all, he doesn't even wake me up, like, gently. You know, it was quite rough. So I wake up, I look at him. He doesn't even say, can I check you, ma'am, or whatever. He just, thing is, my, my, king, my blanket's there by my legs, then I already know, okay, what time it is. I sit, I will lie on my back, lift my legs, because you have to kind of do, like, whatever this is called, to do that to your legs so that you can check. My angel... It was so rough. Yeah. Yeah, it was rough. I actually cried after that because I just felt, do you really have to treat someone so inhumane in a moment where it's either they're in pain because they're in labor or just like a human being? Anyway. He checks what he has to check and leaves. I mocked that doctor because I said, mm, I'm going to find you. Because I know people in places that you go to or you work at. You talk to her and I'm going to tell you what you did to me. Now it's like a girl. This is the same day. So it's still the, the following day after my initial labor day that was predicted. And now it's night time of that day. Now I kind of start feeling things. Mm pain so I figure oh I'm in labor my child is really not dilating at all that baby boy was chilling hard I think I was on two centimeters for a day then so the pain wasn't that bad so now it's the second day after my initial day of labor was predicted right I really wish I remember the dates hey I can calculate the dates by Kumkani's birthday. Duh. <laughs> so this was the the third of July. Okay. My yeah, my labor date that was predicted was the second of July. Kumkani came on the fifth of July. So the third of July is when the girl lost her baby and I was violently checked. So now we are on this day, which is the fourth of July. Fourth of July um I, I introduced the day of the 4th of july in slow or beginning stages of labor because the pain wasn't that bad and the contractions were coming like after each other it wasn't like short short then it's contraction short short contraction that's how you know you're close pool now they're kind of go everybody's there my pastor's wife is there my mother's there my friends are there obviously my husband as well Taking turns, rubbing me, lower back, it does wonders. Rubbing your lower back. I'm also like, what, hap what helped me a lot was being in a squat position. Like I'd bend my back and squat. Relieved me so much of the pain. So, imagine the whole day is just that ghetto. Do you understand? 
and that boy was in labor for uh, uh, three centimeters for the whole day the whole fourth of july that they sat at three centimeters because they kept on coming to check me and they were like three centimeters three centimeters i couldn't believe it fourth of july it's night time it's quiet now like i really think it was like i think it was like probably midnight or 11 ish it's quiet it's just us the hands that are going through labor that are there so i'm in a different room now they moved me like from the morning already into a different room it was just me in that room there was another bed and it seemed like someone else was coming later on that someone else did come cool so now i'm minding my own business honey i am walking up and down in like in like close to my bed walking up and down um standing against the wall and <gasps> Oh, it's so ghetto, <laughs> guys. I'm there, sounding like a whale, sharp, walking up and down, sit on my bed. Da, 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 da. In comes a lady on a bed with a nurse. She leaves her. So the beds are, our beds are like this. The room was smaller than the one I had been in the previous day, so it only accommodates two beds so our beds are against the wall I guess when you walk into the room the beds are horizontal like that yeah this lady brings the the other bed with the lady on it like vertically so this lady's bed is like this and our beds are like that so we can see her this other lady wasn't there man actually next to me she had been gone for a while I think she went to give birth I was in there for um, by myself for a long time so oh by the way uh, kifra that's why i have the duke on but it's giving so i'm doing my things in active labor i can see but i can't really see what's going on i'm not really conscious at this point because my pain is taking over everything so but i i could tell this lady was brought in here she's sitting on her bed sort of like the bed is, is is raised up a bit so she's like in a sort of acute ish position her legs are she's quiet which is the other thing that confused the hell out of me he is quiet from the moment she's brought in till the moment the bombastic happens didn't hear a peep from that lady so as i am doing my round of walking i'm walking from the tip of my bed back up to the head i'm going to lean against the wall i'm going to squat a bit and do the breathing out things ne? i go i do the thing by the wall i come back i'm not lying i come back this lady just did this it was so quick guys because it's just a walk from the head of my bed to the end of my bed where all of this happened she she's already sitting like this there yeah? and her legs are right on the bed the bed is like this she's on the bed she just did like a, a sit up for a few seconds and she pulled out something that looked pink i could not see that it's a baby i could not see that the baby, oh, I should take off this earring. The baby made no sound. <sighs> you guys. She pulled it out, she put it on her chest and dressed it, right? <clears throat> I said to myself, did, did, I, did I just see that? I literally continued what I was doing. I didn't comment, I didn't scream. I thought that thing quickly to myself and I moved on with my life. A few moments in, the nurse walks in. I think now I was on my bed. The nurse walks in and she's like, But you when? Oh, some pizza. <laughs> Translation Why didn't you call me? She's shocked. So clearly, I saw what I saw. That lady gave birth by herself. She pulled her own babe out. They quickly rolled her out and left office. I don't know what happened after that. But in my mind, I'm like, if this lady was so close to popping, how come did you just come bring her in a random ward 
and leave her. She can't be unattended because, guys, it cannot be that hours passed from the moment she was rolled into my room until she did that thing that she did. There's just no way. I know I wasn't lucid, ne? but there's no way. There's not a damn way that all of that was ours. Uh, that, that, she, no, that must have been at least, at least 20, 15 minutes. It, can, it can't be more than 30 minutes, let's say that. So I don't care, like, how, how was she unattended for that long? And I mean, I'm sure they would have checked her. So she's pro she was probably 10 centimeters already or nine centimeters. So in 20 minutes, you can definitely dilate one centimeter if you're that close. That babe could have popped at any moment. So why did she leave her unattended? Oh, hey, I can explain. So it's a different day. Look, my camera uh, battery, I still have one only. So the battery died and I had to go to work and start somewhere. So by the time I, um, the, the battery died, I looked at the time and I was like, ah, I can't charge it and then continue recording, like finish the story time. So I had to leave and I was like, oh, so ghetto. Like the next time when I, when I finished the, off the video or the story time, I'm gonna look different. <laughs> Let me finish off the story time. Really, the bombs are done. How can I forget? <laughs> they did me dirty, okay? So, n now that I have given birth in a private hospital with my second child, I thought of something regarding my recovery. You're not gonna believe it. They didn't give me medication for pain when I left the hospital the public hospital so okay I'm rushing that's the last bomb but okay so um, you know after the lady gives birth by herself they broke my water because at that point I think I was begging I was in labor for two days active labor for a day and a half mm, with no um, epidural I really didn't want to I, I went in there Bogota vibes. I'm gonna do this. My body's designed to do it. I was really really crushed that it looked like my natural birth story is not gonna happen But I was more in pain than Anything I wanted it to end um, I felt I pushed through enough to try But Gumi cakes was just not coming Gumi is my son and um, And my husband was also just like it's too much like it's too much to see you in this much pain so yeah so eventually then i started asking the nurses no bro cut me get this baby out oh because i felt like a cow <laughs> because it's like a constant doing this because you need to rapture the whatever that membrane thing for the water to come out so oh, it's just so violating like then I went into theatre, they took the babe out, I think I gave birth at like 10 past or 5 past um, 12 midnight, 5th of July 2018. Um, I was just grateful that my babe was there, obviously first time mother, it's just like, oh, I've got a child. And they look so creepy, they're like little aliens, they are, they look really scary, A um, newborns look scary. So, I'm going to tell you about the last bomb, okay? <laughs> now, I do not know anything. I have never done this before. So, there I'm there in um, labor ward, or newborn ward, whatever it's called. Moms and babies. Everything seems fine. Obviously, I'm not feeling any pain because I'm still on medication. I mean, the nurses come, they give you medication at, at, on the schedule. I don't know if it's three hourly or six hourly. Good bless my. Hey, it's time to go home. Even my going home was a bit dram, but I don't think it's worth telling. So, eventually, go home. Excited for my new life with my new babe. So, I went through my recovery. There was no prescription that I got. 
um, I know I left the hospital with, and which is the great thing about, I don't know if it's only public hospitals, but they've got like a, a an office, a home affairs office, where you go and you register your baby and you get the birth certificate. So I left the hospital with my baby's birth certificate because I was so nervous, like, oh, when am I going to go in this pain that I'm in or just like as a new mom with a whole C-section, you want me lying at home affairs, bruh. Um, so I'm, I'm grateful that they had that. So anyway, leaving the hospital with everything. So I think. I knew it was going to take six weeks for me to heal from this uh, C-section. And to be honest, the rea reality of the pain only hit me, um, I would say, later on in the night of the day when I got home. Because remember, you're still on the high. Like, at the hospital, they're giving you, they're feeding you pulled snuggle. Now, no, I don't know. I didn't know that I had to get a prescription. I mean, they should do that. I recovered naturally, guys. Do you know, like, no pain medication with a fresh C-section. I wondered why it took me so long. And after having my second child, because I never even researched it. After I healed, I was just like, oh, thank you, Jesus. I didn't want to think about it. Trauma. So after having me, Lamu, and MediClinic gave me medication, I still have those things. Do you know the beauty of suppositories? Oh, those things are from God himself. Oh, they go up your bum. They're like a waxy pill. Sorry, TMI. They're a waxy pill, and they're shaped like a bullet. And they go through your anus. But my God, the pain. You can run a marathon. You can do sit-ups with a fresh C-section. Those things are, I love them. I, I, um, <laughs> so anyway, I got those things after giving birth to my second child. And the recovery from that C-section, please, it was, it was wonderful. I, I could bathe myself because with Kumkani, I couldn't bend down. Like in the shower, um, I, couldn't, I couldn't wash myself from the waist down. I, getting on the bed, my husband thought I was being dramatic. Um, getting on the bed, babes, it was like it was like a hippo trying to do hopscotch. I looked ridiculous. It took me longer than it should. Just putting one leg on the bed and then having to use your core. Oh, by the way, you use your core for everything. If you didn't know that, just go have an operation quickly somewhere in your abdomen and then you will know that you use your core for every single thing that you do in your life. So, you're having to use your core to now lift your other leg onto the bed. Yeah, no, that was real torture. Normal time, they say, is like six weeks for you to be able to at least be somewhat functional. I was somewhat functional, mm, really, really, after three months. And so in Bloemfontein, <clears throat> my, my mom's came, girl, my mom's came, um, helped a lot. I did not bath my child for at least two weeks. Um, they did that. Like I said, I could only do so much for myself. So dressing myself sometimes, my hubby would help me, my brother, shout out to you, lights. Who is texting me? My brother, one twin, was with me. Um, he would help me sometimes lotion my legs, put on like, you know, pants, then I pull them up, you know. Girl, you are, <laughs> you're so helpless. It's, yeah, you, it's important to have a support system. Very important. So I had to go home. I had to ask my husband, please, can I go home? Because I think we both agreed that we're not going to do that. Like normally, you know, girls go home to their mother's house. And we were just like, no, man, I'm not going to do that. They'll come for a couple of weeks and then they'll go and then we'll be fine. But I saw it. Nah. It's not going to work. I think if he wasn't studying, it probably would have worked. Anyway, I went home. Let me tell you this, guys. These things are coming back. Did my C-section not rupture? Okay, let me not be dram. It didn't rupture, but... And if it wasn't gross, I'd show you the picture. What was happening? It was like like those wee hours of the morning and I just fed him. So, 
I have to um, kind of sit up, you know, against the headboard when I feed the babe because my mom was always like, please don't you ever feed him lying on your side. If my mom hears of one tragic story, it's going to apply to everything and anything in life. <laughs> she once heard of a mom who suffocated a baby to death with her breast while she was sleeping and feeding the baby at the same time. And I know those things happen. Um, yeah, so she, so because she put the fear of God in me, I just never did that. I did that once I got more confident and once Gumi himself could pull back. Because at some stage, kids are able to act on reflexes. Like, like I can't breathe, you know, naturally. You, you, you gasp for air. So if a, new, a newborn can't do that, a newborn can't even move its own neck. So in those stages, it's very important to not feed while you're sleeping. Side piece information. So... I sort of set up high enough to be able to breastfeed the child. And as I do that, look, it was always painful. Remember, I'm still in pain. I'm still recovering from a C-section, naturally. Um, for those who don't know, let me just add this. Go Google it. A C-section, bro, it's not just cutting le le just this one, and then the baby comes out. There are layers that they go through. I forgot the exact number. There are layers that they go through inside of your abdomen to get to the babe, because the babe is far. It's not your skin and then the baby's here. It's far. So there's multiple cuts. That's why it takes so long, that's why it's so severe. That's why it's so invasive, that operation. Um, it's not just like one cut and then the baby comes out. So, um, just thinking about the fact that I, I healed through that naturally is insane. Anyway, so I feel as I'm trying to set up, a pain I've really never felt before. Like, it was always painful, like I said, but this one was... Mm -mm, it was different. So immediately I freeze, because I'm like... It feels like this thing is open. That's how I felt. So immediately I'm like, no, 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 God, no. This is not what we're going to do. What you're not going to do is this. Yeah, but, So I come down, because I'm done at Ulambile, and it's time to feed the child. I just, you know, guys, moms, I just... Bear the pain, because I'm pausing it. I'm like, I, I'm going to deal with this later. Let me feed my child. Feed, 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 feed. Gumi's out. I put him down somehow. I don't even know. Because you use your core for everything. So imagine sitting like this, and then now you must... <laughs> put that baby down. I'm like, okay, let's do this. I put my hand there, girl. So there's still a... a, a, a bandage or whatever because they plaster you you don't just like walk out and it's bare it, it's covered with plaster so I lower my pajama pants and I sort of feel around I didn't move the, I didn't remove the plaster but I feel around and there's an, a certain area that, that I, I, I gently press because I knew the type of pressure I could apply that I gently press to feel is it real is this way it's so because I felt the pain like let's say the c-section scars here Excuse me, I felt the pain over here, like in the beginning. That's why I felt like this nigga has opened up. <laughs> you. So, I press, you know, the side of the scar, nothing really bad. And then I press here and it's like, like a sharp pain. I knew. And then as I'm doing that, my hands, well, my fingers feel wet. Got a joy. It's open. <laughs> The thought of having to get stitched up again. And guys, remember at the time, I'm thinking this is how it should be. I'm not supposed to have some sort of pain medication. Um, I didn't even ask. Like, yo, So, yeah. Anyway, immediately I call my mother. I think I texted her because you can't shout once again. Your call. You need your call to shout. <laughs> She comes running in the room. It's so dramatic. She comes running in the room. You know me? I'm like, Mama, if we like it. I didn't say anything. I'm like, I didn't say anything. I'm like, Ma, if I won't go something. Ma, it's really so. Um, I, and she's like, what? I'm like, like I point to the section, like it's really so. Check what's happening. I have to say it because it's hilarious. So she comes, um, the blank is open, my pants are already down, and she that she switches the light on and checks. <laughs> oh, gosh. 
gosh, the fear in that girl's eyes. My mom's very, um, oh boy, what, what's that in close up, girl? I don't know. What's that in English? She gets frightened really easily. My mom is not that girl. Like every time my newborn babe Kumi um had reflux like so when the milk comes out of his nose, she ran. <laughs> she left a new mother to find out what, what was I doing in that instance. <laughs> so my mom's like that. I don't put her in situations where she's she's gonna have to do something scary or someone could possibly die. Don't do that to her. Because she's gonna run and leave you. So she looks at it, she says nothing, but I'm, I'm, I'm looking at her because I can't do that. I can't look down. I need my call. <laughs> so I'm looking at her like, she's quiet, that baby is silent. I'm like, Ma, you don't want me? She's like, it's in front of my husband. So my mom, my aunt's a nurse. Now I'm just like, okay, we live like far from my aunt. How are you not going to tell me what's going on? You know, Unbeke Ka actually say, nigga, look, we'll go to the thingy tomorrow, whatever, whatever, sleep, it's nothing. Why is your first reaction to call my aunt who's a nurse? I knew. I just knew. So I keep quiet and try to calm myself down because I am not about to stress. So my aunt arrives. <laughs> I remove the stuff for her. She looks. My aunt gave the exact opposite. My aunt will tell. You. oh baby girl you're about to die or something so she looks at it like a few seconds she looks she's like yo sister Becca. <laughs> that's my mom oh my god i was like uh oh -uh, you don't need right i'm just like what guys i'm gonna add subtitles because i can't translate this it's this too funny i'm like hi you don't need and then my aunt says i ask he because she she can realize now that she's you know shown that it's, it's serious but she doesn't want to freak me out because I can't see anything. I'm so helpless. So she quickly, like, I ask her, Germany, we're just going to go a clinic in Gomsa um, and then my dress. Right? And then I'm just like, okay. So when I went to the clinic the following day, um, it, 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 it hadn't opened, but there was like um, liquid coming out of like, that first stitch or first area where there was a stitch because I think the stitches had come off by then but anyway there was, there was a liquid so I guess there was some sort of opening girl I don't even remember I don't know I didn't care I just wanted this thing gone so when I asked that nurse she said no like it's not open and you're not dying and it's not what's the word it's not you know the possibility of pus coming out it's not septic um but uh, she cleaned it and dressed it again and she was like no you'll be fine and i was fine but it was a uh, it was scary i must say it was scary going through all of that was not wonderful the absolute ghetto but you know as all moms say the, the gift is the baby that you bore and when you look at the child you forget everything you went through so Fix your medical aids. Don't cancel it because life is good and you're young and you're not getting sick. Because you never know when you're gonna. Guys, I hope you enjoyed the story time. Don't forget to click on subscribe. By the way, speaking of subscription, I appreciate it. I see the views, my angels. Thank you. But, the number of subscribers versus the views that I have. So, if you're watching, please do subscribe. Like, pause the video, check if you've subscribed, and please do that. I know I've definitely watched a lot of YouTubers' stuff, and I hadn't subscribed, and I kept going back, and it took them really asking me to check or us to check to realize, oh my gosh, I have not subscribed. That's crazy. Uh, but I always consume their content, so I'm just asking you nicely, please, to check if you've subscribed. Anyway, thanks for watching. Have a great week. <laughs>